I wanted to go over the exercise of animating your own name. So I'm in Photoshop here and this is a default Photoshop size document. Um, the first thing to do is to get into the right workspace and the workspace we want to use today is uh, from the top line of the when you come to window, workspace and the one we're looking for is motion. So now we have, as well as having the layers panel, our favorite layers panel, we also have the uh, timeline here. So let's start by making um, a sample of type that we can use for the animation. So select the type tool and click once in the middle of the frame and simply type your name. Okay, so now I've got my name and if I select the type I can if I come up to the top line of the menu I can uh, change the size if I click and drag on this little icon here can you see if I drag to the right it gets bigger and if I drag to the left it gets smaller so let's make this nice and big and I need to change the typeface as well if I click on the little drop down by the name of the font I can then simply scroll down these fonts until I find one that I like. That's the one I'm looking for. Okay, move tool to move the type to where I want it to be. It's actually a bit too big, isn't it? Get the type tool again. Select the type. Just make it a little bit smaller. Okay, that's cool. Um, I now need to make a uh, new video layer. But before I do that, we want to edit the keyboard shortcuts. We made our own keyboard shortcut, if you recall, for um, duplicating the frame. So inside the uh, key keyboard shortcuts come down to layer which is here and then we need to scroll down this list it's quite a long list but it's a very long list if I come down to it's down here somewhere video layers and then in video layers the one we're looking for is duplicate frame so what I want to use for my duplicate frame command is command and M so if you just click Command and M and then click OK and then you should have that as your shortcut. I now need to make, this is a, a video timeline, you need to create a video timeline here. If yours at the moment says create frame animation, that's not what we want to do today. We want to make a video timeline. So make sure it says create video timeline and click on that, please. Then you can see that you get a timeline with our layer already made up in it here. And this is the blue paddle that moves up and down the timeline. And we need to make now, in order to do the animation, we need a new blank video layer. So if I come to layer, video layers and over to new blank video layer like that so now I've got the artwork and a video layer I need to load the artwork as a selection and the shortcut to do that is to simply hold down the command key and when I put my icon over the thumbnail for the layer and click it will load it as a selection. Can you now see I've got the marching ants going on here now around my artwork? I can turn out the background artwork and work on my layer now. So I've turned out the eyeball on the type layer and I've selected my video layer one. Make sure that you're at the beginning of the um, timeline. So the blue paddle needs to be all the way over to the left. I'm now going to make uh, 
with the paintbrush I'm going to use the number two brush this one and it probably needs to be about I'd say 50 pixels for me um, it depends on what font you've chosen so um, it may be different for you but it looks like 50 is going to work for me uh, select the color that I want to use to animate my name have some something like that would be fine and then simply I start at the beginning like I was going to write it so I begin writing at this edge do a little bit and then command M to move on to the next frame can you see it's moved on one frame My neighbour's cutting the lawn. I'm just going to shut the window. Okay, so. Uh, Command M. And onto the next frame. Command M. And so on. You can see how, we're gonna, how this is going to work. Okay, so. I'm going to carry on doing it and then you can come and join me at the end. Okay, so here we are now back near the end. Coming to the end of the animation. Take your time and try to be as neat as possible with this. And then it will look nice and smooth when you play it. There we are so if we just back off to the, the beginning back to the beginning and press the space bar to play and then previews, previews our animation so it might be a bit speedy but you get the idea to add a hold on the end we just need to print some more frames so hold down the command key and just press the M a few times I'm going to go to three seconds because I think that's going to be long enough. Okay, so uh, now I want to drag in the tail of my layer to three seconds. And that way it's only going to play that part of the animation. Right. So far so good. Okay, I'm going to put it onto a black background, select the background, edit, fill with black, click OK. Now I want to add a hotspot to the right on so that it appears to have a kind of glowing leading edge that's writing it. And I do that by making another layer. This, this layer can just be a, a normal layer, it doesn't have to be a video layer. Because we're going to animate the layer rather than paint on the video. Okay, so, and we make the hotspot, make sure that the all the layers are the same length. We make the hotspot by using the gradient tool, which is this one here. If I click on the gradient tool, um, and the one we're looking for, I'm just going to set these back to black and white and have white as my foreground color. The one we're looking for is this one, the foreground color to transparent one, which is the second one in. I can edit the gradient by clicking on the gradient in this options bar here. OK. So we want to go from from white to transparent and we want to have um, a long soft tail to the gradient so this is the midpoint of the gradient this is the beginning 
this is the midpoint of the gradient and that's the tail so you can see it's got a long tail on it has not a long transparent tail just slide the opacity over a bit something like that and have a go click OK the one we want is a radial gradient like this this one radial not the linear one but the radiant radial gradient and make sure that reverse is not checked okay make sure it's just unchecked reversed somewhere in the middle of the frame just click and drag to make a hot spot can you see it's got a kind of white solid middle to it and a long soft tail that's the kind of thing we're trying to create we're going to animate the position of this hot spot and to do that we twirl down this triangle let's just label that hot spot so we don't get confused hot spot we're going to animate the position properties of the hot spot so if I turn down this triangle these are the things that we can animate for the hot spot we can animate its position its opacity and the style the layer style the one we want to work with is position so if I get the move tool which is this one the one at the top of the toolbar click and drag on the hotspot layer I want to place it over the leading edge of the um, animation okay so click and drag and just drop it roughly on the leading edge of your animation and I want to record that position there so if I click the stopwatch can you see it gives me a keyframe on the timeline this diamond shape is a keyframe so the software knows that at this point on the timeline this keyframe records this artwork in that position if I come on to the next keyframe can you see that the leading edge has moved so if I move my hotspot onto the leading edge and it adds another keyframe you can change the scale of the timeline by clicking and dragging on this triangle here can you see now I've got two keyframes onto the next position move the hotspot and now I've got three and so on so just be slow and careful with this animation it takes a little while but the effect is well worth it once again I'll see you at the end of doing this so always move the timeline move the object move the timeline move the object okay I'll see you in a minute okay so here we are now nearly towards the end of this like that oops and you can see that I've got for every frame of the animation I've now got a keyframe for the position of my hotspot and the last thing I want to do is once it's finished is to fade off the hotspot okay so we're going to make it fade out and disappear so in order to do that we want to animate its opacity so we start here I'm at the end of the animation there and I want the opacity there to be 100 and um, the opacity is here can you see on the layers panel opacity is at 100 like that then if I come along a little way if I turn that opacity down simply click and drag it down to zero now can you see I've got two opacity keyframes we've animated this value from from 100 to 0 and if I play it can you see it means that the hotspot simply fades out like that so now if I press play there I've got a hotspot writing my name press the space bar to play press the space bar to play okay so now this 
if I wanted to send this to someone or upload it to um, YouTube or something, I need to turn it into a movie. At the moment, it's only a Photoshop document. So in order to render this as a movie, I need to click on this little arrow here in the bottom left hand corner. OK, if I click on this arrow, render video. OK, so here we are now. Um, I'm going to call it, surprisingly, I'm going to call it John. And I'm going to save it on my desktop. OK. And this, the only thing we need to worry about here is that videos make big files very quickly. Um, so in order to avoid that, we use a thing called a codec a codec and the best one we, that we can use for online video is this one H264 all the video that you see online is encoded with this um, compression to make nice small files so it's like a JPEG for a picture but this is for a video and I think we can just leave everything else and if we just click render it goes away and it has to take the time to add all the frames together and make them into a movie. And it shows you its progress by this sliding blue bar. And now that movie should be on my desktop. I come to... Yep, there it is. Okay, so now if I double click on that... It will open it as a movie. So here we are in quick time now, and we can just play the movie. Fantastic. So this I can email to myself and get it on my phone, send it to my friends, or I can upload it to YouTube, or anything I need to do with the movie now. So I hope that's helpful, and I'll see you soon.